in Virtual DJ 2025, they've added a stem swap sampler. If you've seen the groove circuit sampler on the Alpha Theta DDJ Groove 6 controller, it's quite similar to that, but it's more flexible. And it's got more features. The idea is that you can sample from a playing track, a loop, but not the whole track, just the sample can be the stem that you want. So it could be the vocals, it could be the drums, it actually could be a mixture of them. We'll talk about that in a minute. Once you've sampled that, and you've got it on a sample slot inside the sampler like normal, so you can trigger it anytime you want. If you trigger it on another track that's playing, instead of just playing that sample, whether you sampled the vocals or the drums or whatever, instead of just playing that over the top, it will take away that stem, so the vocal or the drums from the playing track and replace it with the one you sampled. So you can use it to switch out vocals or to switch out drums and so on. So it's quite a creative feature. We'll talk about how you might want to use it towards the end of this demo. And I'll also give you some advice if you kind of quite like the idea of all this stuff, but you're like, ah, I struggle to mix two records together. Never mind. Play with samples. I'll give you some advice on where you can kind of learn the best way of using all this kind of tech. Right, so let's start off though by looking at how it works in Virtual DJ. So the first thing to remember is this is just an extension to the existing sampler. A sampler gives you pads that you can trigger, which will play things that you've recorded, usually loops, onto those pads and play them over the top of whatever else it is you're playing. So people use it for you know, air horns and all that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do here is a little bit more creative. Let's go into the sampler. So on this left hand deck, I'm going to click sampler and then I'm going to click this little pads button here, which will give me the sampler controls at the top. So I now have these pads here, which are empty. That's why they're grayed out. And also you'll notice that this says record vocal and this says record beats. So if I click on here, you'd imagine that I'd be able to record a vocal on here and not the whole track. And that's true. But how? You set all that up, I'll just go into now. So there's a little button here that you can click. And you'll notice that when I click this, it gives me a few options for the sampler. And this is enabled, stem swap bank. So if I turn this off, now the sampler's just got record buttons on it. And this means that if I click record and I'm playing a track or I've got a loop selected on a track, it'll, it'll sample the whole thing. In other words, the, the, every, every part of the track, there's no stems going on. As soon as I turn on this stem swap bank, then we get this ability to record. In this instance, we've got vocals on the top four and beats on the bottom four. Now you can change this. So if I click in here and go to the uh, record slots button here, this now says select stems for recording. So you can see that pads one to four are set to vocal and pads five, six, seven, and eight are set to hi-hat and kick. And so this means that when I click on these pads, this is what's going to happen, but I can change it. So if I wanted within this set to have the full track on that button or the instruments or the bass or whatever, I can change it in here. One nice thing about this is that you can actually select more than one. So you can see the bottom ones have got the hi-hat and the kick selected. If I wanted to add the bass in there as well, now it's going to record the bass, the hi-hat and the kick. So you don't have to just stick with one stem. You can select as many as you want or as few as you want for each of the pads. I'm just going to leave that where it is for now. And we're going to record a vocal onto this first pad. So this is no different to the way you would normally use the sampler in most DJ software, including Virtual DJ. It works on the concept of recording a loop. So I've set a 32 beat loop here. And again, in the settings here, I've got record duration set to follow loop size. And what this means is that whatever loop I've got set, it's going to sample that section of the track into the pad. So if I change that to 16 beats, then this is going to have switched to 16 beats. You see it's got 16 beats written there. This is probably the best place to leave it set to for not confusing yourself when you're when you're sampling stuff. So I'm going to set that to 32 beats. So that means about uh, an, well, exactly an eight bar sample. So let's listen. I'm at a point in the track here. Uh, let's listen to the track. Okay, so that's 32 beats or eight bars. I'm gonna click loop there. So that's now set to loop. Now I can actually click the sample slot without playing the track. So if I click this record vocal there, it changes to the name of the track. That's now got the vocal recorded in there because that was a vocal sample slot. Uh, but you would often do this while you're playing. So while you're playing a track, you will click that button and it will record the duration that you've got set. 
Right, so that's now recorded. So if I click this sample slot here, we ought to hear that sample, that bit that I've got highlighted, but it'll only be the vocal. Let's have a go. I know you're scared. You wanna hide away sometimes. I know you heard from everyone telling you lies. I said you just wanna lose your mind. Oh. I know you're scared. You wanna hide away sometimes. So I've got a perfect eight bar or 32 beat loop of just the vocal sampled on there, which is pretty cool. Now you can sample anything you want from a track to these slots and you can choose what you sample by doing what I showed you there. But the second part of this puzzle is the way it now works with other tracks. So on the other deck, I've got a track loaded that's a similar style, but it's got a different vocal. Let's have a listen to it. Okay, so if I want to play that track, but I want to play the vocal that I've just sampled over the top of it, then this new function will let me do that with one click of the sampler. I play the new track and in the sample slots on that deck, I click the sample I want to play and it will take out the vocal and replace it with the one in the sample, which is really useful. So let's do it. Let's set a loop first. So I'm gonna set the loop on the new track to 32 beats and I'm going to start it playing. We'll play it through twice. We'll play it through once with the original vocal and when it loops around I'll click the sample slot here and it will hopefully replace the original vocal with the one I just sampled from the other deck. So again, what was happening there is that it was turning off the corresponding stem to the one that I'd sampled into the stem swap sampler, and it was replacing it with the one that I triggered. So there's something to note here, and that is that you have to trigger the sample on the deck that's currently playing if you want that to happen. In other words, if I'd have clicked it on this deck while this deck was playing, it wouldn't have taken the sample out of the deck that I was playing to replace it. It would have just played it over the top because it didn't know that's what I wanted to do. So that's a mistake I made when I was first playing with this. I was like, well, why is this not working? Uh, let's have a look at another couple of things that might trip you up here. So to start with, these samples are all stored in banks. Now that's never been any different, but it's worth remembering that because now they've got a new feature which lets you lock a bank. So for instance, let's just look at the banks down here. This is one that's called My Bank. It's a good place to start because it comes empty and you can move through all the banks that come with the software here. You can see got drops and effects and so on, some Loop Master stuff. So the idea here is that these banks can be locked or unlocked so you don't accidentally delete things. So there's a new locked bank tick box here. So this is, I've currently gone to a different bank and it's locked. So this basically means that, look, I can't delete these and I can't add anything to these spare slots. So to do that, you need to click that and it will unlock it. Um, and here it says this is a supplied one and you can't unlock it, but you can copy it and then mess around with that one. So I'm not going to do that, but let's go back to the one that we were playing with. This is one that you can do stuff with. So if I lock this, you'll see that all my buttons here have now stopped being recordable and this one here I can't if I right click on it that would normally delete it but it won't it won't delete it if I now unlock it everything becomes available again I can record and I can also delete slots in that bank so two more things to share with you here I haven't had time to check this out but I'm sure this is true this will all be mappable which means that you can have spare buttons on your controller that you set up to do this so you don't have to do it on the screen as I've been doing here. That's how Virtual DJ rolls. But the second thing, and the most important thing is, this technology is great, right? This is appearing in DJ gear all over the place. Variations on stems and variations on instant acapellas and drum replacement and all this kind of stuff, right? DJ software marches on. But it's easy to feel a little bit overwhelmed by it. <laughs> you know, I struggle to mix two tracks together, never mind worrying about 
instant acapellas and loops and dropping things over other things. You've got to worry about the musical key. You've got to worry about whether it's going to stay in time and all kinds of things, right? So if you are someone who understands that this can be fun and that this could make your DJing better, but you really don't know where to start with it. And it normally starts off by saying, I really want to use acapellas, right? Now I've got acapellas available to me at the touch of a button in any song in my DJ software for the first time in history. I really want to know how to use that. But then it moves on to things like replacing the drums, which is another big use for this technology here. You could replace the drums in a track that aren't very good with some better ones really quickly. It will make your mixing better. It will make transition smoother and so on. So if you're thinking, actually I want to be able to do this stuff but I don't really understand it enough I'm not confident enough I don't know even whether what I'm doing sounds any good then here at Digital DJ Tips we've got a course that teaches a cappella and stem mixing to people just like you it demystifies it it gives you all the tools you need to become confident in using these functions in your DJ software. It will work with Virtual DJ, but with any other DJ software. And you don't even need to have software that's got stems built in because we show you how to extract acapellas and drums and so on from tracks away from your DJ software. And just bring those files in in order to do the same kind of thing that the software is letting you do within nowadays. So if you're interested in learning how to DJ properly with acapellas and stems, and you are so far a little bit scared by this technology, do go and check out our acapellas and stems course. But for now, that's it. That's the big new headline feature in Virtual DJ 2025, the Stem Swap Sampler. Let us know what you think of it underneath. I'd love to hear your comments. But meanwhile, this has been Phil in the Digital DJ Tips Studio with another demo saying, get good, get out there and make the moments. Bye for now.